Thanks to everyone for coming. Ms. Dozier, do we have a quorum, please? Yes, sir. Councilman Contreras is present. Councilman Gilliam present. Councilman Brennebaum is absent. Mayor Pro Tem Young present. And Councilman Kimmel present. We have a quorum. Thank you. At this time, would you please rise? Join me in a moment of silence, and then join me in the pledge, please. Thank you. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> we have a public comment tonight from Mr. Dave Lorenzo. Dave, you want to come up? Yes. State your name and address, and you have three minutes, please. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. My name is Dave Lorenzo. I live at 133 Sandbass Road. And I'm here uh, tonight in light of our uh, upcoming completion of the road construction on Sandbass Road between Sandbass Court and Ranch House Road. Uh, we're blessed with new pavement and, and have an expectation of a long service life. However, our neighbors' collective history will show that high speeds and people leaving the roadway, knocking down mailboxes, and leaving various auto parts in our front yards is a common occurrence. It is a straight road and people tend to step on the gas. Speeds in excess of 55 miles an hour are not uncommon. Now that we have an extremely deep drainage ditch, three and a half to four feet in some areas, no shoulders, no road markings, we are likely to see numerous accidents and possibly serious injury or death. We're petitioning the city to help alleviate these catastrophic outcomes with a series of possibly mitigating steps. One, install speed limit signs. The speed limit is 30, 30 miles an hour, and virtually nobody abides by it. We'd prefer 20 or 25 miles an hour. Install children playing signs. We have many children on this street, both of their parents and grandparents. Three, install no shoulder warning signs. This is a real area of concern because we used to have shoulders, now we have none. It's just a sheer drop. We need to use technology. And final, we need this street lined with a center stripe and edge markings. The new vehicles today all seem to have the technology to sense a lane departure. Either, either they do it passively through warning signals or corrective steering inputs. Please consider a study to mitigate the speed and dangers of our neighbor, neighbors and our fellow drivers. Thank you. Thank you. This time, could I get Mr. Louie to come up, please? <coughs> Proclamations tonight. Whereas Lulu came to the United States from China in 1985 with $40 in his pocket, seeking freedom and opportunity. First living in South Dakota, then moving to Fort Worth in 1992, having heard the fall of Go West Young Men. Whereas Louis quickly became a valued member of the North Texas community, becoming a member of Birchman Baptist Church, starting an import business, and eventually adding real estate development to his pursuits. Louis fell in love with the Parker County community, calling small town America the best part of America, and began building quality office and medical spaces in Little Park, making him an integral part of our city's development. 
who is the very embodiment of the American dream, whose success displays a deep love for his country and his community. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Doyle Moss asks that you join me today in honoring Louis Lou and his contributions to the law. Thank you, sir. Thank you. the fun part of this job. Okay, council, could we have a motion to approve the minutes of November 28th, 2023, please? Make a motion we approve the minutes uh, for city council meeting November of November 28th, 23. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Next item, the city. Council shall conduct the first public hearing on the following proposed annexation, voluntary, voluntary annexation proceedings pursuant to section 43, 1055, subchapter C1 of chapter 43 of the local government code to enlarge and extend the boundary limits of said city to include approximately 7,815 feet of East Bankhead Highway right of way, a description of which is as follows being 7,815 feet more or less of East Bankhead Highway, a variable width right-of-way, out of the following surveys and abstracts in Parker County, Texas. ING NRR Company Survey, abstract number 1821, John Cole Survey, abstract number 218, and James Oxer Survey, abstract number 1029. A.J. Hood Survey, abstract number 2587, and Eliza Oxer Survey Abstract Number 1031, containing approximately 10.95 acres of land. The survey and field notes have said approximately 10.95 tract is available in the city secretary's office and on the city's website. We'll open the public hearing at 6.08 p.m. Mayor, can I explain why we're having two public hearings tonight on this item? Yes. Actually, there are three public hearings on the agenda. These first two items, three and four, the city's annexing Bankhead Highway. It's a, under a new law, and this new law basically requires us to either get the consent of the county or to have them request this. We've asked them, and they've given us a resolution requesting annexation. This will enable us to get the property down Bankhead Road, it's adjacent to Bankhead. And so to annex a road right of way, you have to have two public hearings and they could be held at the same meeting under separate agenda items. So that's why you have two different public hearings tonight. And then we'll have a third public hearing tonight on the actual property that's being annexed. So um, that only requires one public hearing. So that's why we're having three public hearings. Thank you. The public hearing is closed at 6.09 p.m. Item number four, the city council shall conduct a second public hearing on the following proposed annexation, voluntary annexation proceedings pursuant to section 43.1055, subchapter C1 of chapter 43 of the local government code to enlarge and extend the boundary limits of said city to include approximately 7,815 7, feet of East Bankhead Highway right-of-way, a description of which is as follows. Being 7,815 feet more or less of East Bankhead Highway, a variable width right-of-way, out of the following surveys and abstracts in Parker County, Texas. ING NRR Company sub Survey, abstract number 1821, John Cole Survey, abstract number 218, James Oxer Survey, abstract number 1029, A.J. Hood Survey, Abstract Number 2587, and Eliza Oxer Survey, Abstract Number 1031, containing approximately 10.95 acres of land, 
The survey and field notes have said approximately 10.95 tract is available in the sec city secretary's office and on the city's website. Public hearing will open at 6.10 p.m. <clears throat> the public hearing will close at 6.11 p.m. Item number five, the city council shall conduct a public hearing on the following proposed annexation. Voluntary annexation proceedings pursuant to a landowner, landowner petition submitted by Dustin Kyle Haney and Jamie Lynn Haney to enlarge and extend the boundary limits of said city to include approximately 31.247 acre, acre tract of land owned by them. A description of which is as follows. Being a tract of land <coughs> situated in the Eliza Oxer Survey, abstract number 1031, Parker County, Texas, and being all of tracks 1-3 as described by D to Dustin Kyle Haney and Jamie Lynn Haney, as recorded in document number 202-200-494, deed records Parker County, Texas, containing approximately 31.247 acres of land. The survey and field notes have said approximately 31.247 tract is available in the city secretary's office and on the city's website. Public hearing will open at 6.12 p.m. And the close, we'll close the public hearing at 6.13 p.m. Next item, to discuss and take action, action to adopt an ordinance to allow the city administrator the authority to make minor changes to the PD plan development district for the single family dwelling subdivision of Country Hollow, 19.16 acres, John H. Phelps survey, abstract number 1046, city of Willow Park, Parker County, Texas, thereby amending ordinance number 882-23. Ms. Tony. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, this was the PD that we amended on the uh, September 12, 2023 item for the agenda that was approved for the ordinance 88223. It was realized after this was already accepted that the developer had overlooked the fact that the 1,700 square feet, that most of the, more than 50% was going to be over the 2,000 square feet. So they just wanted to head instead of changing, <coughs> instead of allocating how many homes were going to be in the 2,000 square feet or the 50% over the 1,700 to 2,000 square feet and 50% greater than 2,000 square feet that we just go ahead and change it to 1,700 square feet being the minimum. That way that opens them up to allowing to building larger homes in there. And we requested that per Pat's um, approval that the city administrator can go ahead and make that change so we don't have to do notices again being that it is a minor change to the PD. So it is recommended we make the change? Yes, sir. Okay. Staff recommends approval of the plan development for Country Hollow as presented under the authority of the city administrator. Okay, any questions for Tony or do we have a motion, please? I have no questions. Can we just uh, make a motion to approve it as stated? I need to read that again. Yeah. Bottom of page 20, there's a recommended motion. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have that. There you go. My question is, do we need to read the caption for the ordinance? No, you really don't. This is, it's already been approved. All we're really doing is, is our ordinance says if you're making minor changes to a PD, the city administrator can, or staff can do them, but we have to bring that to the council's attention. So that's what we're doing here. Okay. All right, make a motion to approve. Uh, Approval to allow the city administrator to make uh, minor changes to the PD plan development district for the residential subdivision of uh, Country Hollow, as stated. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next item to approve a contract proposal for professional services with Westwood Professional Services. Ms. Tony. 
Mayor and Council, um, in an effort to beautify the frontage of City Hall with landscaping and increase the parking area, City staff reached out to Dorothy Whitmire of Westwood Professional Services, Inc., which was previous Pacheco Coke, for help. Um, that's the company that did our Cross Timbers Park, and so we're very familiar with her and with her work. Um, after meeting with staff we and understanding our request for the site improvements, Dorothy presented to us with an attached proposal for civil engineering and architectural services with optional assistance with utility plan, electrical engineering, and structural engineering. The proposal does not include the surveying of this area as has already been done by Jacob and Martin's staff per, per staff's previous request. The total for the civil engineering and architectural services is $72,600 with an additional $16,000 for the optional services of utility plan, electrical engineering, and structural engineering for a total of $88,600. These funds are available within those appropriated for the improvements to City Hall upon its purchase. Dorothy is here to answer any questions that you may have, and staff recommends approval and execution of the contract proposal from Westwood Professional Services, Inc. for all services proposed for a total of $88,600 as presented. Okay, any questions for Tony? Do we have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve the contract for professional services with Westwood Professional Services, Inc., in the amount not to exceed $88,600 as presented. Thank you. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is to approve the sale of a 20 2002 John Deere 310G backhoe by online auction. Michelle. Good evening, Council. Um, I have before you a 2002 John Deere backhoe. Um, <clears throat> this backhoe technically was retired a few years back when we bought, purchased a new one. We've been using it at the sewer plant to move chemical around. Um, we recently started having some issues with it. Since it's not something we use often, I would just like to sell it, get rid of it, and then look that putting that money towards something else. So I'm asking y'all to approve me selling it online. Okay. Any questions for Michelle or do we have a motion, please? We roughly know what the value of it is. Is there a blue book on it? Or? I, no, unfortunately, it's, it's just now old enough it doesn't really have a value. Okay. So. Bag of peanuts. <laughs> okay. I'll make a motion to approve the sale of the 2002 John Deere 310G backhoe. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor. Thank you. Next item, to authorize staff to accept bids to demolish the building located at 516 Ranch House Road. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> so, as y'all know, a year ago, um, we actually moved out of that building and moved into where we are today. Um, this is going to come as a shock to no one, but the building is in complete disrepair. No. Uh, yeah. If you need a moment to grapple with that hard fact, I'll, I'll give it to you. But um, the idea is that, that the building needs to be demolished. Um, it could create a potential hazard. Um, uh, vagrancy, um, things of that nature. There's been no power to the building for seven, eight months. Gas has been, the gas meter has been removed. Um, there are a few things that, that we want to try to keep and, and maybe uh, recycle somewhere, like the generator, for example. But by and large, the building needs to be demolished, and uh, we need your approval to demolish the building. This is just the building. We're not going to sell. We're not selling the property. We we don't have a plan at the moment for that. But um, but we do need to go ahead and demolish the building. Can I can I make a motion? <laughs> <laughs> no. The only well the only <laughs> the only request is Betty Chu wants a shot at it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do we have a motion, please? Does it um, include the parking lot? Will that stay <clears throat> as is? We will. We'll judge that. The building's the, going to be the primary one. There are some things. We may take the parking curbs out, um, the, the poles and the signs and things of that nature. Um, 
it, my intent is to level the entire parking lot, try to keep the asphalt in the parking as, as intact as we can. Okay. Yeah. Individuals use it for the Yeah, parking. yes, sir. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll move to authorize staff to accept bids to demolish the building at 516 Ranch House Road. Nobody will scream at one time. I'll happily second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, quarterly reports, Mr. Grimes? Yes, we've got quarterly reports in your packets. Um, we have staff on hand if you'll have specific questions to ask. Um, overall, uh, it's kind of a good recap of where we are. Um, Tony did, was proactive and sent our development report out to some interested parties. Uh, they responded very kindly uh, to her to her efforts and our efforts as a city. Um, we are starting to see more activity in development, which is a good sign. Um, and so that means things could be picking up. Um, but yeah, the reports are in there. Anybody have any specific questions or things they want to uh, they want staff to address? It's all good news. Uh, so are we just? You're not going item by report by report. Just if you it, have any questions. On yeah, that. yeah. I, I can. We can do that if you'd like. I just the, we put the reports in the packet. How how would you like to proceed? Well, I only have questions for I guess police and. Um, engineering. Okay. So, but I didn't want to skip over the others if somebody else had questions. I, I don't think staff's going to be offended if you didn't ask them to come up and. Okay. Well, I just, if any other council members yeah. wanted. So let's let, maybe Gretchen. If, if I'm in charge here of picking who gets to go. Yes, ma'am, you are. We'll go with Gretchen. So, um, great report, um, I will say. So, my questions regard um, some of the questions we've had um, from. Um, and this is why it's a joint police department. It's a because <coughs> I believe that was in the police department as well, is that it's difficult because of the calls to jump to what I read. We have so many calls out on the interstate, it's difficult to police a lot of the roads. But we've um, put concrete on Ranch House. Um, we've had steep we, ditches on Ranch House. We did. Mm -hmm. We've got we've ground. Been. We've got mm -hmm. the same situation. Mm -hmm. We've got these bigger concrete roads. So my overreaching question to address to, for you to address is all of these larger, smoother, straighter roads um, with ditches. Do we need to assess speed limits and enforcement of speeds? Um, we've added because we've had some requests for additional speed limit signs on Crown. So we've added some over there. I think we just have one. So I don't remember how many we added, but the five total on Crown. So people can see them. still 30. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I guess one of my questions there is, do we feel that's an appropriate, do we need a, a study? Do we, should it be 35 or what, the same as Ranch House? So we, we, we could. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if they've helped because after we put them out, I've had people, residents call saying that, you know, there's, there's still speeding yes. through there. So we, we could do that just to see if we should lower the speed limits okay. over there. But um, I think Crown, I think it's a collector. I think it's a 60 foot right of way width through there. So it's 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 not like our typical residential street. So right. I, we we could try to do that and, and see if we, if it would <clears throat> warrant us reducing the speed limit. Well, there. and that's I, I, the main thing I'm seeing is Ranch House I think is posted 35, and then Crown is posted 30. So there's a little difference between the mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. um, so just which way we want to go, or do we really feel that a Crown is different enough? that it merits a lower speed limit. I think they're both collectors. I need to yeah. check the right of way with, I think Crown is either 60 or 70, okay. and I think Ranch House kind of like the same. Okay. It's not our typical 50 foot residential street. Right. I guess that's one thing that I'd like to see is if we kind of look at, as we've changed all of our roads, let's check the speed limits mm -hmm. and the enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, um, as I drove Crown the other day, um, everything's striped with yes. both, um, and is that intended to be on 
um, sand bass or yes we have some striping pavement so, markings on sand bass road that are too okay, that mm -hmm, are. Mm -hmm. okay. so on ranch house ground we've got the center line striping and then the bike lanes um, so uh, we've got narrow lanes because because right. of the bike lane so I, I thought it was <coughs> going to help with the traffic and the speeding through there because of the narrow lanes, but it, it seems like people are just, yeah, okay. flying through there. But, but there's, there's pavement markings on Sam Bass Road. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what, as we finish these, if we feel we need any additional study, you know, let us know if we need something more formal mm -hmm. to establish the speed limits mm -hmm. um, and make sure that it's or enforce them. Mm -hmm. so. I think that's all my questions for Gretchen. Okay. Um, at the last meeting, Mr. Lorenzo noted some drainage uh, concerns. Well, the the sand bus drainage? Yes. So we, we went back and um, so included in the drainage um, improvements phase one project was the regrading of the earthen channel between sand bus road and stage coach trail. We, we went back and the Earth, the channel, we created a 10-foot wide V-shaped channel through there, about a foot deep. The channel alignment, had a, we had to change it slightly because of the pipeline crossing, um, but we, we regraded it. Um, we daylight just short of the pipeline crossing. Several homeowners have requested um, about lowering the pipeline, so staff contacted um, Magellan and um, just just to inquire about the scope, cost of lowering. If we were to lower, uh, regrade the ch lower the pipeline, regrade the channel, and um, it it's it's going to be very costly, over half a million um, to do that. Um, they're saying that um, they'll have to dig up um, a, a trench to be able to lower the pipeline, um, open cut the road, stagecoach, um, place sacks in the new pipe and drain the pipe. So they provided us with um, a, a cost estimate of what that would be, um, and it's over 500000 Dollars. So, um, we we think that um, by up 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 upgrade because we added two 24 inch pipes on Sam Bass Road. So by upgrading the um, drainage infrastructure on Sam Bass and um, widening that channel, we think um, it, it, it's it's a cost effective effect, effective approach to improving the drainage on the Trinity Estate subdivision. Okay, any other questions for Gretchen? If for some reason um, in the future we discover that it is not uh, sufficient we uh, could, solution, we can add that to the next round. Of we could revisit. Mm -hmm. I know we've, so on Trinity uh, Drive, we've regraded the bar ditches. So we're um, trying to contain the water on Trinity Drive to stay on Trinity Drive. Um, uh, ranch House, we've Great. The intersection of Ranch House and Sam Bass Road, we um, created a berm to keep the water on Ranch House. On Ranch House, I think some of the homeowners were saying that some of that water would come off of Ranch House and in onto Sam Bass Road. So we put a berm um, to contain the water, keep it there, um, and, and we're, we've. We're going to regrade the bar ditches on, on Sam Bass, so um, keeping the water on the north side of Sam Bass on the north side and having, having it drain into the two 24-inch pipes that we just put in and have that runoff drain towards uh, Stagecoach Trail. Uh, <coughs> we, we think it, it'll work, but uh, well, we can revisit, um, you know, it if we still have, have any issues out there. Okay. Thanks, Gretchen. Okay. Chief Franklin. Chief Franklin. Well, 
that. On the uh, speed limits and enforcement, I did notice, I think I'm, I'm asking if, if I read that correctly, that one of the problems when you do have citizens call out for specific patrolling in an area within the city is that we're understaffed? Is that we right? are. Okay. We are understaffed. So currently at the time of this, for the, for the year up till the beginning of December, we've had over, over 5,000 dispatched calls in the city. That's not self-initiated or traffic stops or anything. Those are actual dispatched calls. Of the 5,000, half of them are on the interstate or the service roads alone. So when we respond to those calls, when the, most of those are going to be accidents, we had 70, 72 major accidents on the highway. <coughs> That's two officers every time because of the highway, the traffic, everything, keeping them off the other officers. Two officers have to respond. They're going to be up there for hours uh, dealing with that, getting the road cleared, getting the, and so we only have two people on a shift. So when you have two people on the interstate answering all the calls, half the calls being on the interstate alone, that leaves where we don't have anybody to respond to the neighborhoods. So some of, we haven't really had complaints. We just had people calling me saying, how come I don't see officers in the neighborhood as much as we used to? It's because the call load has picked up so high on the interstate that it is taking all of our resources to stay on that interstate to deal with it. And because of that, we're kind of negating the neighborhoods and not getting in there the way we used to because the call loads are going higher. And I'm guessing the solution is um, eventual expansion of the department. Yes. Okay. How come we're doing it and DPS isn't doing it? I know some agencies don't do accidents and DPS does do that since it's DPS jurisdiction. DPS will not work any accidents inside the city limits. So they basically have county jurisdiction. So they will work accidents in the, in the county alone. So anything within our city, they will assist us if we need assistance, but they will not work the accidents. And the county will not work accidents. DPS works all their accidents for them. Okay. So Bankhead Highway is now going to be yours to... Yes. <laughs> so yes, it, it will eventually just get more and more. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Any other questions? Next thing is executive session. We'll do comments afterwards if that's fine with everyone. Uh, we're going into executive session to discuss economic development negotiations, 551071 consultation with attorney, Wilkes Development 380 agreement, discussing the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of property, 516 Ranch House Road, consultation with attorney, half and associates litigation, and personnel matters, city manager review. 628 p.m. We are going into executive session. We pulled out the dartboard. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. We're out of exession, executive session at 7.09 p.m. And on the uh, item number 11, we have a motion for the uh, 380. 380 agreement. I move to authorize staff and for the mayor to draft a chapter 380 agreement with Wilkes Development in an amount not to exceed $300,000 and that 50% of these eligible incentives are to be reimbursed to Wilkes Development after six months after the initial permit request and the remainder of the 50% of eligible expenses to be reimbursed to Wilkes Development upon the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor. Thank you. Next item on personnel matters. We have a motion, please. I authorize that we extend um, the contract for our city manager an additional year and provide a 7.5% increase in salary. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have a motion? 
Or second, I'm sorry. I'll second that. We have a motion and second. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor. Thank you. Council comments. Any council comments, please? I would like to request that um, at some point in the first quarter, we pull together some sort of uh, needs assessment with our former architect, Jacob and Martins, regarding um, office space okay. to modify what we had before when we thought we were going to construct a building with what we now have. Okay. We could just start addressing our long or short term needs the next two years to long term five to ten for this office building. If we could kind of get an idea for that and some requests from staff of what they think their needs will be in the future and okay. how that matches with what we own, that would be. Do you say five to ten years, you said? Yes. Two to ten. Two to ten. Two, thank you. Short term versus long term. Anyone else? I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. It's been a great year. I'm looking forward to 2024 and uh, wishing everybody citizens and Rick, even you, a Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> City Manager. I'm more focused on January 1st. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I know you are. <laughs> Mr. Grimes. I'll, I'll be brief. Um, thank you guys for the uh, contract extension. Um, I appreciate it greatly. I know Heather and Zach. Um, we love it here, and, and this is another layer of security for my family, so thank you for that. We appreciate it. Um, Whatever crud is going around Willow Park has infected City Hall. Um, we have two staffers out with COVID. Um, I have not, if, if y'all haven't noticed, I'm not feeling well today at all, but, um, but uh, we are running thin. I want to thank the staff, senior staff. Uh, they pick up the slack all the time, and um, um, this week has been no exception. On the January 9th, um, we do have the sale of the COs for uh, the wastewater treatment plant. I have a rating call with S&P tomorrow morning uh, to, to in, in preparing for the, the sale. But I think Maha should have us, and Kristen Savant should have us ordinances and documents for our January 9th meeting. Um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say nobody wants to be here on December 26th for a council meeting at 6 p.m. And so if that's the case, then we'll go ahead and cancel the, the meeting for December 26th. So moved. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Make a motion we adjourn this meeting. Second. Second. All in favor. Thank you. Good night, Irene.